TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, dang, dang, dang. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, we got HMP, Pentonville, London, Britain's toughest prison. You heard that before. Well, maybe we haven't heard the word toughest, but we heard prison something prison. Um, this is brought to us by Organized Criminals. Shout out to them. Just subscribe. Let's get into this, man. It's an hour long. No pauses, gang. Pentonville in London is one of Britain's toughest prisons. Over a whole year, for the first time on television, the BBC has followed repeat offenders inside jail, outside on release, Freedom. and even back inside again. Mick wants to fix easier Britain free. We don't like to see the pre skin it, it gives up too much of the show. 7,500 offenders come in and out of Pentonville every year. Afraid criminal damage. The left hand side of my head. Mick Norman is a regular. He's 43 and has 119 offences on his Dang. record, most linked to crack and heroin use. Ah. Norman. This time, he's inside for stealing bottles of spirits, which he sells for cash. That's so common in Chicago. <laughs> Right now, Mick would rather be locked up in Pentonville than free. Why? Right. In here, I'm safe. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm clean and sober. I've got a bed, my food's here, I've got a job, I've got tobacco, I've got friends, I've got staff I know. And out there, I'm, I'm, I'm living at the bottom of a block of flats in a bin shed. No money, um, I've got no ID, so I'm not claiming. All I need is... <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> 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 it's all right. I don't to say it'll be all right, you know. It ain't going to be like that, is it? So, my safest place is, is dependent on No. Staff do try to prepare repeat offenders for release, but every day there are more urgent challenges to face from Pentonville's many difficult and dangerous inmates. Joking, Mitch, anyone in the house here got a radio as well? Today's duty governor has to deal with a mentally disturbed prisoner who's refusing to take his medication. He's incredible. This came out in 2007. Oh, maybe it was re-uploaded in 2017. Right. ...aggressive and won't even entertain any staff attempting to help him, um, which is when we see him spitting at staff and punching staff and throwing things and he secretes weapons. To if y'all are wondering what happened to the um, Myra... The Myra reaction, it got blocked. Um, which is surprising. I, I, I don't remember real stories ever blocking anything from me, but uh, I mean, cool. Try and use it and stuff, so it's very, very tricky. A team is taken away from normal duties and sent to the healthcare wing just to make sure the prisoner gets the treatment he needs. He's very, very volatile, even if he is compliant at first, please remain on your guard because he does have a history of staff assault. Keep your shields down because he spits. Be careful, y'all. Make y'all work for y'all little money. My hat looks good. It's not. Officers must give the prisoner every chance to comply, but make sure they are protected if he hits out. I said, how I feel like getting beat up today. He's just gonna comply, okay, okay. Since he refuses medication, staff must maneuver him into a position where it can be safely administered.
into a position where- Why did that look just so aggressive just now? Is it just me or is that aggressive? He was complying, wasn't he? It can be safely administered. Dang! Maybe it wasn't aggressive, I don't know. Night. Hold on, man. I gotta make sure all of this records. I'm recording. Okay. I'm gonna edit this out. Y'all won't see it. It's gonna be like a blink of an eye. Honestly, being one of the best editors on YouTube, it comes. It comes. You know, it, it, it's comes with a lot. Calling me from Boca Raton. I think this is my baby mama. Dang. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Okay. All right. A wing, another new arrival. Chanel Bice is 36. He's been in and out of jail since he was a teenager for robbery, burglary, and assault. Have you been here before? Yeah. When was the last time you was here? Last year. What's your offense? What offensive what weapon? A lot knife. Position of offensive weapon, yeah? Yeah. He's hoping a spell inside can set him straight. Well, I'm 36, so realistically, I've done like 22 years of my life in jail. Outside, it, 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 it's hard because you got the, you got this to do. It's hard when you come to prison. It's easy. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got your your telly, you've got your kettle, you've got your meals three times a day. You know what I mean? It's it's easy. You got no bills to pay, no nothing. Do you know what I mean? So. That's how it is. I wanted to come to prison today, do you know what I mean? Like, because... This is the second person we ran into that wanted to come here. It, it, it's too much for me out there because I'm an ex um, heroin addict and an alcoholic. So for me to come to prison, it helps me... I kind of get clean, it for life like, reoffenders. You know what I mean? That's why I'm here, do you know what I mean? Because I wanted to give myself a break and, you know, Outside prison, Chanel has fallen out with his fiance. He wants his mum to contact her. What well, did did you speak to Nina? And what she say? We can start again, mum. Just tell her that we can start again, and you know what I mean, mum. Yeah, but mum, I still love her, and that you know what I mean. I'm gonna go right. Do what I asked you. Just now that I see this, like now that he's man's went back to prison to get away from his fiance. <laughs> Because they was arguing, all right. To let her, I love her, and you know, and to, to write me a letter so I know what's happening. Chanel will be in Pentonville for two months. On Sea Wing, staff are monitoring a prisoner who is creating a major disturbance. Do we have a chap on here, Mr. Kieran? He's um, been here for several weeks now. He's, uh, that's, that's, that's him now, yeah. He's going home in, a, in the next few days, but um, he seems to be getting maybe anxious about that as well. Or maybe he don't want to go. The prisoner will be let out of his cell to get his lunch, but Principal Officer Bartley has concerns. He's been banging his door, he's quite irate, he's asking, demand, making demands about all manner of things. If it comes to a restraint, then what I expect is three officers to be doing the restraint and Mr. Long to oversee it. Outside the surgery, the prisoner has thrown a plate of food at another inmate and officers are forced to restrain him. That's not like, this is like the Forever 21 or Bass Pro Shop employee staff. Like, they don't even look like real prison guards. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, 
Stand him up. Stand him up. Stand him up. Mr. Lawrence. Right. Okay. Just not too easy. I'm going to take this thing to the I remember I got arrested one time, right? And there was this one cop, just this one little short, fat, bald cop. And he was just going hard on me, like trying to make fun of me, trying to, like, 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 just saying all kind of stuff. And I'm looking at him, because I'm complying. I just put my hands behind my back, waiting for them, blah, 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 blah. Complying. Being calm, cool, collected. And I look at him, I'm like, bro, what's wrong with you? Like, what happened to you today where you kicking it out on me? Because I haven't said a word to you, and you just continue to go. Like, be professional at what you're doing, because I'm, I'm giving y'all an easy time. I could be irate. I could, be a, I could do whatever I want. <laughs> I could give you the toughest time, but I'm not. I'm 6'2", X amount of pounds. I can make this very difficult for y'all, but I'm not. And you talking to me like I am. Just like, and he he looked, he stopped. He was like, you right, my bad. He was like, and he apologized. I was like, thank you. Chill. I didn't really even do nothing either. Down in the segregation unit, Sean Kieran will be searched, then led to a cell. He is nearing the end of a short sentence for a drunken fight. After two hours, Sean is calm enough to explain his fears about leaving jail. He has a drink problem and suffers from depression, and he's wanted more help from the prison. What, what's worrying you about getting out? I've got a lot to not look forward to. I'm probably going to lose my flat. I don't know if the gas electricity's on. One thing that I've been given help for in the past was, you know, about utility bills, like getting in touch with gas and electricity people to say, you know, yo, I'm in prison. And this time round, it's been like, I've been asking for someone to amputate an arm off themselves. Point is, I'm an alcoholic and I've been trying my best to stop drinking. And I'm terrified of going out, picking up as I threatened to do a bottle of Jack Daniels and this time chugging it like it was just water, you know, to hell with the consequences. Yeah, you water. can stay clean and sober. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, once you're out in the real world, you know, it's a different matter. Oh my God, man. Come on. I'll get raw and drunk and end up dead somehow under a car. Someone kill me thinking that I'm going to hurt them. You know. Well, you're being drunk in brawls. At Pentonville, prisoners can do courses or attend education classes, but many are locked up 23 hours a day. Is that normal? On G Wing, Mick Norman is allowed out of his cell to work as a cleaner. I shouldn't say it, but I've got a bit of a soft spot. Uh, Mr. Norman. <laughs> Norman, you know what they say? A woman's work is never done. AKA okay, she likes I don't know what he does outside. You know, maybe he's a total pain in the ass outside. And his victims probably would have a different thing to say about it. But in here is as good as gold. Mick is currently drug free. But years trapped in a cycle of prison, addiction, and homelessness have left him estranged from his family. Where do you um, stay when you go out there? Where? Unless I've got safe housing. Yeah. I'm going to be back. So I'm better off here. You've got your food, you've got a bed. Yeah. Oh, this guy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sorry state of affairs, isn't yeah, it? I'm not the only one, am I? You've got family outside and everything, haven't you? Hey, anyone got Where are your kids? With their mums, with, with my family. I don't even see them. Why? How can women come out of jail and say, oh, I'm back again for a couple of weeks and pass up again? So I'm better off not seeing them, you know. I ain't seen my boy for nearly two years. He's, he's 16, he? he ain't even got a mum. He lives at my mum's house. I've, I've had him since he was a baby. But how do you know that he, he feels like that? How do you know that he oh, doesn't he, want you to come round? And... Because, because it doesn't matter what he wants, my mum don't want it. You could write her a letter and just explain how you feel. So give her time before, to think miss. about it. I've said it all before. Yeah, but I, I, I Keep saying it, bro. Sort of give up, really. I just don't think you... I think you just got to... Gotta keep, keep trying, saying basically. It, yeah. Keep trying. Perhaps I will. My son hasn't got a mum or nothing. He's his grandmother's house. I stay out of contact with him because that's better for him. 
the best thing I can do is stay away from my mum because then I'm I'm doing the right thing by my son so that I can be a responsible parent again and a productive member of society. I've got no right to be around him at the moment. He's safe, he's doing well at school, he plays music, he's a mentor for other kids. I'm really proud of him, but and I miss him, don't get me wrong, I don't know. Um, Man, it's gonna make a difference Before later in your son's life. life. You better keep Mick trying will be so out in just trying. three weeks. Local councils seldom offer immediate housing to newly released prisoners, so it's up to the prison's drug support team to try and find him somewhere to sleep. Down in segregation, officers deal with a dirty protest every few weeks. Well, a Sean protest? Kieran has now become so desperate about his imminent release that he started one too. Let's put shit on the observation panel. So there's two things there we can't see in. So we can't do for his protection and his welfare. But we've got to see in. A lot of dookie. Excrement in there. Yeah. We should get kitted out. Yeah, we'll get the white right. suits on because we'll, we'll it could end up all over the top. This is the type Please. of stuff that make prison guards want to whoop you. Carry to the back of the cell. The rules are that dirty protesters must stay in the same cell until they have ended their protest. So, staff have to clean up around Sean Kieran. That sucks. It's nothing we've never seen before. It's nothing we've never seen. You ain't got no mask on? see it every other day. It happens once or twice a month. Even if they're on a dirty protest, prisoners must be offered food. Right, Kieran. Stand back yourself. Sean Kieran is becoming increasingly disturbed. You have lost now. Because even if I get out of here, I'm going to do something really off the fucking grid. All right. Stand yeah. to the back of the cell. That's all you've got. Fuck you. Yeah. Fucking hard. Come in here and I'll keep you. Fucking right. Glasgow kiss to make your last. Fucking nap. What do you say? Glasgow kiss? You're trying to Glasgow kiss me? Yeah. Glasgow kiss. 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 Glasgow Okay. It takes another day in the segregation unit for Sean Kieran to bring his protest to an end. Yeah, you're gonna throw up. You're gonna get to catch something. Then. Okay. I'm all right now. You're all right now? Yeah. So you woke up this morning and things felt better? Yeah, I was thinking a lot more clearly. Making stupid remarks like girls going kissing and all that, you know. I suppose in a way it's like false bravado, if you like. That's what I'm talking about. We was just talking to him about, about, uh, about he doesn't want to end up under a car because somebody thinks it's going to hurt him. Well, you you issuing out Glasgow kiss warnings. Like, of course. <laughs> Shennel has been in jail a fortnight. He sobered up and started thinking about what keeps dragging him back inside. I've, I know what, what has triggered me off to be like is like when my dad passed away like seven years ago this August. I do think about my dad, but it's hard, like, I still think my dad's at home, like, drinking his whiskey and that, you know, but he ain't. That's what made me go a bit cranky. So I, I, I've, got to, I've got to let go, but I don't think I've let go yet. Though he's calmer inside prison, prison Cheryl is anxious about what's going on outside. Obviously, I love my girl, innit? I was going to get married to her and all that, but I don't know what's going on. She hadn't even sent me a letter or nothing, so I don't know, I'm just, I'm irritable, you know what I mean? I 
man. It's horrible, man. I'm worried about her. Well, I don't know if she still loves me or not. I don't know. Just have to find out, wait and see. Come oh, on. McNorman will be free today, but because his sentence is under 12 months, he'll have no probation officer. He may also have nowhere to stay and weeks of delay before he can access benefits. The only way I can survive outside is to commit crime. I've got, you know, where am I going to sleep the night after? What do I eat the day after? Where do I go? What do I do? Where do I wash? Well, you know, I ain't a street beggar. You know what I mean? I'm a grafter, so I'm going to go out and graft to earn me money. money. Why am I going to sleep on the street when I'm going to earn myself one half, two hundred quid a month? And I can do the same in the afternoon. I've got to pay for an hotel for a week. It's a vicious cycle, man. I'm sorry, but it's still the wrong road, isn't it? The worst thing you get from me is here. It's the worst that can happen, is this. And you know, I ain't got to pay for this, have I? Tax, please. <laughs> sad, I know, but it's true. Good luck. Thank you, miss. Hopefully, we won't see you soon. Hopefully, but. Right, so. I've left me bed. <laughs> you wanted to say realistically, you will. Because it is. No, that's not the attitude. You sell, you sell us on hold. <laughs> No, well, okay. for the day. I hope we don't see you back. I won't. Take care. See you after me. Thank you. See ya. Well, you like them, aren't you? Let them stay with you. Seven of your own money. We're giving you seven pounds seventy fifths, forty-six pound discharge bonus. I thought it was sixty-nine thirty-seven. You happy? You got everything? Yes, miss. Hey, they gave right, you some you money. Yourself? We got all our breath on that one, really. Gotta use that for all food. The man. prison has set up a meeting for Mick at a housing charity, but. Even if he can tackle all the bureaucracy involved, he has no guarantee of a roof over his head tonight. Well, I'm here, so... <laughs> plan is go and get me birth certificate, shoot the tooting back, get me final ID. assessment, try and get the housing benefit forms in. If they accept that, I might be able to get in the property today. If they don't, and I've got to wait more than five, four or five days to get in anywhere, I'm not prepared to stay out on the street for four or five days, so I prefer to come back to Penneville. So what do you think your chances of staying out of this jail for the weekend are? This time round, 60-40. Damn. 60 40 in your favour? Yeah. Are you keeping over butt? <laughs> it's cold in the UK, huh? Oh, it's, it's out of my hands. I've done what I can do. I'll give you a call. I'll go over there. It's cold, cold and rainy. Mick never did call. A few weeks later, we were to discover why. Will he die? Or is he back? Mick. Sean is leaving too. After getting help from the prison's addiction support team, he feels calm about re-entering the world outside. On the day of his release, he even takes time to write a farewell letter. This is a letter from Mr Monaghan, the governor. Thanks to all at the Ville for their tough love. In no particular order of any kind, blah, 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 blah. Thanks in the final analysis for looking after me. Yours sincerely. Peace and love, Sean Kieran. But you feel you've been well looked after here? Yeah, really. Because, you know, things are done for, for a good reason while you're here. You know, you don't always understand why. A happy customer. So to speak, yeah. <laughs> He looks like a seventh grade science teacher. I don't even understand. Freedom! Mel Gibson, Braveheart. That's actually who you look like. Mel Gibson. Bye bye. Peace. Look after yourselves, lads. Despite his anxieties inside jail, Sean still has a home to go to. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. Oh, you good. I've got lots to keep me active, to keep me At least uh, you got a home. away That's from the, trouble. You know. That's my, you know, release from prison to back home. So far, so good? Yep. Shenel Beiser has been waiting for news from the woman he hopes will one day be his wife. 
It's been a good week for me so far. I've got two letters. Okay. She's saying that um that when I get out, like we're gonna start again, try for a baby, get married, that sort of thing. So yeah. <laughs> I want to say he can change, but I want to say she sounds delusional. <laughs> um, uh, she's telling me she loves me, which is a good thing. Do you know what I mean? Because I was paranoid. Because when you come to prison, you do get paranoid. Like, you, you, you think, like, they're doing something else out there. You know what I mean? But all girls ain't the same. Do you know what I mean? And she's even put, like, knee in a bicep. So I'm just waiting for her to give a big kiss. You know what I mean? Cuddle. <laughs> Reassured, Chanel now gets to work and takes up some of the opportunities the prison has on offer to prepare for life outside. No one can say I've been sitting down, doing nothing. I'm doing things in jail while I'm in jail. By the end of next month, I will be drug free. I've got three certificates already. I've got a change in possible. Change is possible, sorry. And I've got relaxation. And I've got heroin. That was the main one. Yeah, heroin. That was my main one. For That's the one. For my drug use, you know? Yeah. Hopefully, you know, I'll, um, I'll get a job. You know what I mean? And just live a normal life like other people. Because I'm fed up with this. It's not me no more. I've done my time, you know what I mean? I've served my time. I'm not complacent with normality, you know? I don't want to be nowhere like this, but I just can't. I don't want to be normal. You know what I'm saying? Get me? I feel like I want. I feel like everybody should want more than normality for themselves. But you know, if you're coming from a place like this, yes, normality is something to strive for. But like, I see so much more, man. <laughs> Another repeat offender, Graham Shields is nearing the end of a 16-month sentence for robbery. Graham is 32 and has been a shoplifter for over a decade. He had a steady job. Sound like you need to retire. You in here again. But gradually, crack cocaine took over. Ah! I feel kind of guilty. Cracks the, the culprit. But crack's quite a powerful drug and it drains your soul kind of thing. I was working uh, for a commercial artist company at the time, Curry, and I lost my job there. I was become unreliable. I stopped eating. So then I started going out shoplifting every day like it was a job, kind of thing, getting up. Um, go and hit a couple of shops, go and sell that, put the money in my pocket, go and smoke crack. Graham was just one of those people who... Pocket. One more time, buddy. Go and hit a couple of shops, go and sell that, put the money in my pocket. And then? Go and smoke crack. Graham was just one of those people who I've probably seen, seen him coming into prison probably six, seven times in the space of 18 months. We'd always have sort of a, a bit of a, a bit of a conversation about what had gone wrong for him this time. How many times have you been in jail, Graham? About 42 times uh, since 98. I started coming in jail. So it's quite a few times. 40, 42 times. Yeah, including this time. No. How much? How many years does that equate to? Graham life? will be oh. out of prison again in three weeks. This time, the authorities have him in their sights. Because he's a prolific offender, it's a top priority to stop him committing crime. And put him back. Shenel Beiser completes his prison sentence today. He leaves Pentonville sober and focused. I'm still, why is this the toughest prison? Like, why is this title toughest prison? This morning, can't wait. Can't wait, can't wait to get out that door. Can't wait. Did you see what it's like? No, not really, not really. It's hard. Yeah, I feel positive. I don't want to do what I used to do, come out, smoke drugs and drink and this, that and the other, you know what I mean? I want to come out straight headed and, you know what I mean? I want to change my way now. Put your index finger on that red light.
Unlike many who walk out of these gates, Shenel will at least have somewhere to stay with his fiancée, Nina. He'd be a good for himself, at least, with his fiancée. Stay free for her, In recent boy. years, Shenel has failed to stay out of jail for long. Now he will try again. Nick Norman lasted just two weeks outside jail. Homeless, he shoplifted to get himself put back inside. But this time, he was sent to a prison where he didn't feel at home. And now he's out again. How are you? Hello, Michael. I'm very well. How are you? A oh, bit of getting out of there. I've, I've, you know, I've been away in the country because that's the worst one I've been to. So. And that's what it'd be taking, man. He took, as a real offender, they were sending him to the same prison where he's just so comfortable at, so comfortable. So you got to make people uncomfortable so they don't want to return to that state of life. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. Was it different from Pedro? These nice prisons. Different. Huh? I mean, you get fed Sunday lunch time. You don't get another hot meal till Monday night, 29 hours between meals. So you back the of your... That's put me off of jail. That's put me off of coming back. Send you one knowledge. Exactly. Right. Send you one knowledge, yeah. I've, I've spent 14 and a half years living up in prisons. Most of it on my mind. You know, it's, it's a fucking long time. I'm getting nowhere fast. I'm getting older, slower. You know, the chances of getting caught were a lot greater. There's cameras everywhere. They, I'm known. Oh, I'm sick of him. Hopefully. It's my last look at the jail. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. I, I can't remember what fucking normal was. You know, we all mugs in prison, I'm a mug being in prison. That's all I fucking know. We all get on, we all know each other. I've never gone to prison, 30 or prisons. 30 or prisons I've been to. I've never walked in prison and not known somebody. I always know someone. Hello, Mickey. How's it going, son? Not that Same time, shit, buddy. different fucking day. Olympic Park, Clatford. It's packed in there. I live that side of the stadium. They never show this side of the stadium. Come over and have a look. Come on, go 10 billion. Well, they can't find me a fucking bed. This is the proper set. That's, that's the new stuff. Built for the image. This is the old stuff. Set the center. Come on. Take it into my world. I'll give you breakfast over there every morning because she's free. There's a big tube, and you can eat some big sandwiches and a bottle of Coca-Cola. Life is short, Mr. That's what it is. I'm just leaving here, Paul. Walk out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Hey, look. 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 Say, hey, fuck it, I'll be all white after Christmas. Go back to Pentonville, go to Belmarsh, I'll be all white, no officers, get on the white. I don't want to. No, I've done my last day in prison as far as I'm concerned. Hopefully. Mick is homeless and has only his prison discharge grant to live on. But for once, he'll now seek money and shelter the legal way. Change of scenery, you know? Graham will shortly be released from prison and will complete the last eight months of his sentence outside in the community. He look like an IT analyst. Like, what did you do? Computer fraud? What did, how are you in here? At the local probation office, plans are being made to handle his release. We know how you in here, but still. Yeah, Graham's coming out and, um, yeah, yeah, we're going to take him straight to um, Norman House. Kevin's coming. Um, yeah, yeah. She did this on purpose. She matched her little cardigan with her hair. That's tough. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take him straight to um, Norman House. Kevin's coming as well, the police officer. So he's going to come with us in the car. He has a really poor record of compliance with probation. And he is literally a revolving door. Rachel. Um, where it really is catch and convict, catch and convict. Because he doesn't engage and he's never complied. 
with any type of orders. Graham has been put on a new scheme called Integrated Offender Management, okay. which targets the most prolific criminals to stop them reoffending. This is the biggest stick and the biggest carrot that he's had. Inside jail, Graham gets work experience. Outside, he'll have a job placement and a hostel place. But if Graham... doesn't play Ooh. ball, probation will send him straight back to jail. Have the chills. If you reoffend, um, you will be equal to the end of your sentence. I feel different this time, I do. I was yeah. saying I do. I don't know what it is uh, like to say what I've done different or anything like that, but inside, I don't know whether it's to do with maybe having been away a bit longer, um, because in the past, prison hasn't worked for me. If Graham can leave them prison gates and stay clean for the first night, then I will be really, really happy with that and really also pleasantly surprised. Um, one night. Chennel has been out for 11 days. He has got a place to stay with his fiancée, Nina, but he started drinking. And today he's been involved in a serious car accident, which he can't remember. I just see bounce off the fucking bonnet, roll onto the top and roll off the back. Mm. Right? And I mean, this kid's come quite fast. Really, well, I don't know what, what speed, but it was fast. So wait, he was a pedestrian? I hope you had insurance. People that weren't to stop the street, everyone's like that. Right, women are crying, holding their mouths. All right, I'm screaming with blood all over my hands. It just seems like nothing ever like, fucking happens right for him, do you know what I mean? Now you're gonna get on ping. Like many pills. newly released offenders, Chennel is also struggling to get his first regular benefits payments. I come out of prison, yeah, about 14 days ago, yeah? Yeah. Was like, you know what I mean? I'm due my money, and because my claim ain't been sorted out, miss, basically, I've had to, like, ask people in the street for money and that, which I have been doing. They're telling me I've got to go back to the job centre, and in, they paid me incorrectly, they give me £36, pound, and they've got, I've got to go back to put it in writing so they can fax it over, and then. That's why I'm gonna fucking commit crime. Jenny, you're too old for this shit, man, man. Come on. Just, it's not worth it. It's not. But I'm not fucking happy, it. I'm not happy. I'm not fucking happy at all. I'm not fucking happy. Just go ahead and walk no. over there. So I've got to phone these people up and try and get across this road. But you can't give me no money. Right, so how do I get my 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 my, um, my crisis loan done then? Oh, that's a joke, man. That's why I got knocked over. This is where I was here. That's why I was here. I was dead. I was, I was dead. He was unconscious. I was dead, man. I think you were unconscious. I was dead. Unconscious. I was dead, but unconscious. I'm still living. Because you were not dead. How much is your super skull? Chennel has stayed drug free, but alcohol has him in its grip once again, and he soon finds all his plans falling away. You're drinking a bit, though. My dad was here who developed me. But he's not a honey, so we got each other in me. It just was my dad was here, man. Look at the dog trying to comfort her. No, I'm not. She knows that. The dog is there for you. And Nina. She can see daddy's hurting. She can see daddy's hurting. 
I told you I'd come to bereavement counselling with you. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with all that. We'll go anger management. Um, keep you occupied and myself. You know, <laughs> and we can get through this, hun. We can. How you gonna keep them occupied? Do you know what I mean? We can, mother. We can. Okay. Hold on, y'all. Remember, I told y'all. Uh, oh, I didn't tell y'all. I'm trying to upload this other video to YouTube right now, so it's finally finished. You know, doing this little check thing, so I gotta see what what is it now. <laughs> It says partially blocked. So let's go look at it. Or let me go look at it. Leave this right here like that, like there, sir. See what they're talking about. Real quick, real quick. I'm gonna edit this out once again. It's 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 kind of tough being the um best editor on YouTube because, you know, some people just, you know, take it for granted. You know? Y'all know what I'm saying or no? Huh? Huh? Ninety-three percent of your audience cannot see this. Look at this man. Tell I can never just just live. Just let me live. Only people in the United States can see it. Well, I don't need people in the United States to see it. I need people in the UK to see it. You feel me? You feel me? And you know, I, yes, I could have waited 30 minutes, but then I have no videos out today. It's nothing. Gotta get something out, man. They're probably gonna block these, but whatever. I did what it is, shouty. Dispute, yeah, no, we're disputing. Dispute everything. All right, man, we're returning right now. Let's put this on there, see if that works. Probably won't work, but, you know, give it a shot here. Give it a hoot. Give it a holler. Feel me? Let's see. Let's see. Go ahead. Go ahead. Get out there. Public. Set as premiere. Done. Save. It's out there now, y'all. Yeah? We gonna do this? Yeah? Try her. No. Well, trying's better than nothing. At the end of the day, like, you want to go commit crime, you want to go back to jail, it's easier, but you have a whole fiancé. Like, a female fiancé and you're a male, and you want to go be surrounded by men? What are you... I get it. I get what Three you're saying, but I don't. Three months after his release, Sean Kieran understand. hasn't gone back to drink. How's it going? Good. Yeah? Good. With help from a local charity, he's taking the first steps to free himself from addiction. At the moment, you're in a good place, and I haven't seen you in this place since I've known you. Bottom line, I'm turning my back on the booze. It sounds a bit vague, but, you know, I've had sort of glimpses of happiness, you know? Whereas before, I was just sort of like, muddling through and just coping and, and just going through the motions, if you like, of life. Every time I see a bottle anywhere, every time I see a pub or an off-license, I mentally say Expelliarmus, sir. Is that from? From Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not how it works, but okay. That's a defensive spell. Well, I said Expelliarmus. Like it was going to disappear. I get it. Graham will leave prison tomorrow. Once he's out, he wants to stay clean and rebuild bridges with his family. You see, my relationship with my, with my dad's not, not, not a good one kind of thing. It, it, 
he's um, kind of old school. Old man is. What's what's drugs? Um, kind of thing like. If you if you want to stop taking them, just stop taking them. Kind of thing. It's easy. Just get a job and. And I've, I think he. I think that's what he thinks. I don't know what he thinks because I've never actually asked. Kind of thing. So. But he's not well, and. Um, I don't want to just go and fix up relationship because he's not well, but I want to fix up relationship so that we can have a relationship kind of thing. Whether that means just come around every couple of days to see that they're all right, maybe take him to church or something. I know it. I think he would like to, like to do that if I could somehow do that. What I need to do is sign, date, a copy of the license. Sixteen three twelve. My stomach starts turning, you know, I'm a butterfly kind of thing. I, I'm excited as well. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about getting out. But that still doesn't take away the fact that it's a, it's a bit of a frightening experience. Most repeat offenders walk alone from the prison gate. <laughs> right. You got a friend or something? You right, Rachel? Because Graham is on the IOM scheme, he is met by probation and a plainclothes oh, okay. police officer. The first hours and days outside are a critical period. So how can you tell me you're lonely? Mick Norman has been out two days He's still homeless and his prison cash is running out. I'll show you something that'll make you change your mind. This is where we live, because it used to be under, under the shelter there. We can throw that old head through there, it's a big room, but it's red shorts in there at the moment, there's candles in there, might be able to grind it up, a bit of paper or something. But... Can, you show, can you show me that? Yeah, of course. This is bleak, my boy. Like, getting out and this is what, what it is. This is the reality of it. Like... Until benefits the size, so you know. We've got a big lump of carpet we put in there. We ain't put it down yet because we haven't sorted the floor out yet. But we might put a bit of white emulsion on it, get a few candles in there and brine up. That'll do for the winter. We've got nowhere. This room will be living. Um, so you, st you slept here the other night? I've slept here since I come out, yeah. David's an Amanita. Yeah, I beg. Yeah, yeah he, he begs. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'll he be does. Begging, uh, that's what's the only thing. But before that, yeah, I was in and out of jail all my life. How long have you been here, David? Uh, six months. Six months in Yeah, this spot. time, six months, yeah, on the road. What's it like sleeping here, have you know? <laughs> bad. Very, very bad. It, it ain't nice, because you get people coming into the park, car park and they look at you like you're a bit shit. Like, but anyone could, they could all be homeless tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's life in Stratford. That's a fact, but uh, I just hope. <laughs> <laughs> Over the next days, Mick persists with his attempt to get housing and benefits. There's no possibility of housing anywhere coming out of that, is there? Yeah. Don't laugh. So are you ringing up about the job centre appointment you're trying to sort out, or are you ringing up about the community care one? And I'm looking to see if there's accommodation available with you still. Then Mick gets some welcome news. Okay. His son, whom he hasn't seen for nearly two years, wants to meet him. Yeah. He's made contact with me and since then we've been texting and um, hopefully our next day or two I'll go and meet him when he's not busy and I'm not busy. And I'm really... You're not busy. So when he's not busy. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it, you know. He said to oh, Dad, don't do it for Nan, for the family, for me. They just keep with it, you know. And, and it's really give me a boost today. Cause, and I've got it because I was, you know, you need that support, you need to come around again, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Today, Chennel is at court. He's due for sentencing on an old public order offence. There's a risk he'll be sent back behind bars. The outcome is crucial for his and Nina's future. This is outside the courtroom. This man is shirtless drinking a beer. But he's drinking again. In the middle of the hearing, Chennel storms out of court. 
I slid a sign now, yeah, because they're saying that I ain't been cooperative with these lot, I could be going to prison. Definitely is the now. The details of the down. court case become a flashpoint. Right. Joe said, well, you don't need to shit, mate. mate. If you go in, well, how about you do it, mate? Down in St. John's right way. No, no, he turned up to that one. That's not the one. Go in. It's St. John's right. Yeah, but they've got access to the computer. Take it down, fuck over mine as well. I'm not plotting on this downfall, but my boy, you at the courthouse with a can of beer, shirtless, outside on the steps. It never looked good. It never looked good. The outcome of whatever was going on never looked in your favor. <laughs> in the end, Chennel wasn't given another prison sentence. Salute. You, somebody was on your side. Instead, the court gave him a strict community order. He must get treatment for his alcohol problem under weekly supervision from probation. Nina is now desperate for Chennel to change. It's fucking affecting me. I'm so upset. Today, even again, he was going to cause more trouble, and we're waiting for a verdict. See that side of fucking court. I mean, I've made my fucking mistakes. I have, please believe me, I have fucked up in my life, big time. I have fucked up. Do you know what? I just want my life back, and it don't seem to be happening with this man. Don't seem to be happening. If you want to make a change, make a fucking change, man. Do it. Don't blame it on everyone else. It's everyone else's fucking fault, isn't it? It's the system. It's this. It's that. Fucking deal with it yourself. She's not Sorry. wrong. She's right. Any change starts with him. Graham has been out three days. Today, he is booked for a work placement as a trainee gardener. Every time he's left jail before, he's gone straight back to crack cocaine, heroin, and shoplifting. The way they said it. But this morning, he's at work on time. This is a Norway. I feel like out of everybody on the episode, he's really trying to change. And a dude with the hair, too, as well. Dude with the hair, he already had a crib and he had like a little foundation, but he hasn't drank again. But this dude, he's really at it. Maple, yeah, that's chickweed. And I don't know what that one is. That's a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> this is positive. This has changed what I'm doing. I don't do this. I don't. I don't come. In the past, I haven't come out of prison and gone into work. Or. Or anything like that. I'm keeping myself busy and out of trouble by, by doing this, and I so that's not to say that I'm saying I've cracked it or anything. It's the first day, but I hope it's the first of many. It's a positive outlook. In three days' time, Graham is due at probation. In the past, he's never managed to attend. Half an hour late now. How long are you gonna be? Where are you now? Hello. Oh, brilliant. Okay, thank you. Bye. You here? Graham Shields is here. Oh, he was quick. He was yeah. quick. I couldn't sleep last night. Graham has got through his first five days out of prison. How do you feel about how far you've come already? I feel, I feel good about it. You're going to your meetings. You're doing everything that's required of you as well on your licence. Just keep taking it one day at a time, but so far... I'm feeling really positive, do you know what I mean? Me too. Right, you're late, but you made Graham was about to get some tragic news. Okay. Everything's going up. Why? Gotta be... One week after release, and Mick is still on the streets. But he's about to see his son for the first time in two years, and he wants to look his best. Look, this is nice. I'm out of the way. Have a look. Mm -hmm. I don't know they're what no, size no, is no it. Well, they're a bit obviously worn off, but... You got some lemon pepper steppers. I see you, my boy. Yeah, I'm done, man. Uh, Sirski. 
Yeah, they fit as well. Yeah, they have to do for me. Yves Saint Laurent, look at that. Yeah, Is that your name? Yeah, Lovely. thank you. Oh, he got Yves Saint Laurent? What? Yeah. I don't even own a designer shirt and he got an Yves Saint Laurent. That's for me. Yves Saint Laurent, look at that. Yeah, Is that your name? Yeah, Lovely. thank you. Swag. Drip. Look at that drip. Excited. Ah. Nervous. Um. He's a young man now, isn't he? That shirt is truly. If they said he's Saint Laurent, that's truly expensive. Yeah, look at that. Hey Siri. Huh? East Saint Laurent. One option I found is hmm. Saint Laurent on W Sunrise Boulevard in Sunrise. Is that the one you're looking for? Saying about how well you're doing and that you're actually trying. Yeah. Yeah, but Connie Oh, it's YSL, yeah. YSL shirt. I'm impressed. Whoever gave him that, that's. Too bad either. Well, now, when I was studying it? the performing arts. Just performing arts. Yeah, it's a performing arts college. Oh. That's why I love it. It's full of dancers. There's like 40, 50 girls. It's going around the college in two twos all day. <laughs> I don't care what happens to me. If, you know, if you never spoke to me again, and didn't jet in it, and everyone did, and it, I'd have to get on me. I still wouldn't go back to prison. I can't make fuck all up for you. All I'll do is tell you that I'll be there in the future. You would. Don't you know what I'm saying? Can't help yourself, you know what I mean? I'm a bitch, you know what I mean? Boy. Yeah, it's just, just emotions, isn't it? You know what I mean? Oh, by the way, you're a little man from there. Can't help yourself now, I know, but it's, um, yeah, I got to do whatever happens. I'm not, I'm not going back to prison, you know. The drink and drugs is out of, out of the window, and if I've got to sleep up a tree for the next three weeks, I will. Well, I'll, I'll love you. Okay. Listen, I'll give you a link tomorrow. I'll give you a text later. Right. That's good, man. It's only when you get a bit older, and you've broken what you lost and the time you missed out. proud. But you realise what really matters, and at 43 now, I realise what matters is your mum and your dad, and your family, and your kids. It's bad. I mean, you, you got 43 hours or something? Well, I didn't see it in life. That's just giving me the boost for the next few weeks, whatever I face. I could not let that boy down again. I wish I had a kid. When at we met Channel again, he'd spent the previous night sleeping rough, believing his relationship was over. And you're not in the flat anymore? No. So you've been sleeping on benches? In the park, yeah. And hybrid. I'm net close from committing a crime. I haven't done it for five months, but I will. In 10 years, I will. Oh man, that man's hurting. I just put my life on track. So I'm crying for, man. My life on track. It just seems like I'm not getting it. That's honestly sad. As part of his sentence, Chennel's progress must now be monitored every week by a probation officer. Chennel's, particularly his most recent offending issues, are, are all linked to his, 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 his alcohol very much, um, getting, in, getting into altercations with people, becoming violent, being threatening and abusive in, in, his, in his language and his behaviour. Uh, so it, that, I guess, is why the court was so keen to, to, to throw this opportunity for the alcohol treatment, because if, if Chanel can look at that and address that, a lot of, a lot of the, the risk, you know, That'd may, be really may it, dissipate. Man. As, as harmful as, as people think alcohol is, man, it, man, it can change who you are. <laughs> Detox is available for Chanel, but first he must attend group assessment. And so far, he's told probation that although he desperately wants detox, he 
won't go to the group. You're meant to be putting me in a fucking detox. What's going on, mate? Okay. You're doing nothing. Where's my detox? I want a detox. I know. We've, we've, we've talked. No, no, no. You know no. what, Dave? Let me talk to you. He's scared. <laughs> I know, we've, we've, we've talked. No, no, no. He jumped hard. You know what, Dad? Let me tell you something. Breach me, mate. Breach me. Because I'd rather do my detox in jail, wouldn't it? I want to do my detox in jail. Okay. What? I'm getting pissed off. Waking up like this. That boy drunk right me. now. Dad, you know what, mate? Do what you got to do, mate. I've come here, I've seen you, you're talking shit to me. You haven't. We, we, you haven't let me talk at all. But you come in. But, 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 but. Okay, can, can we not? So, my understanding of the situation was that there's also this thing called the options group, which is down at the, the Margaret Centre, which I think you, you would have to go to that as part of the. What am I going to go and sit in a, in a group for? For what? Because that is. That's... This is your ego right here talking, man. Your ego, your pride. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go, my boy. Go sit down with them people. Talk it out so you can get where you need to be in life. Part of the process. No, of being no, no, to no, 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 no. I am not going, and I'm telling you that now. Right? I've got a drink problem, and I want help with it. I'm not going to sit in a fucking group. The detox is not enough because obviously you detoxed in jail, but now you're drunk again. You got to talk to somebody and get to, to the root of that, my boy. I'm talking shit. Sorry, Dan. I'm not doing it. It's really hard for me to help you when you come in like this. When you come... Because, oh, no. No, no, no you because, blame me. No, I'm, I'm not, sleeping no. in the park. Okay, there's a lot of stuff... Where, that's... Oh, no. Where were you sleeping? Where were you sleeping? In the crib. Sober. Open-mindedly. <laughs> What do you mean? It's not really relevant. Where, no, it is irrelevant. Why is where that were relevant? You, what, where this... were you sleeping? In the house? Yeah. Or flat? What? And no, I was really sitting here like every decision he made in his life did not lead him to his situation right now. What are you sleeping in the park? About? That's what you're saying? What? That's not relevant. Okay, thank you. Graham was working at the garden centre when his boss received a call. I had a phone call from this woman who introduced herself as, as Graham's mother and she said, I've got some awful news. Graham's father's died. I just said, Graham, would you come back with me? Man. And he was trying to get right to go get in a relationship with his father, wasn't he? To the office and he looked at me not knowing what's going on and I just said, sit down, I've got something to tell you. And I just did think mm, this is a, a likely trigger for him to go back on the drugs again. So what happened? He's not doing so well um, at the moment, and uh, so he's been recalled on his license. Um, he provided he provided three positive drug tests in a row. Damn. It, it, you know, it, it's tragic. You know, you see, you work with these offenders and just as they're getting their foot on the ladder, you're doing good, girl. You know, something else tragic happens. Once probation has recalled Graham to prison, it's the police's job to arrest him. But Graham cannot be found at any known address. Oh. He's on the run. Graham sticking and moving. Two months later. For Chanel, things are starting to go right. Okay. Despite all his problems. Seven months after leaving prison, he is cooperating with probation and has got assessment for detox. He has stayed off drugs, out of trouble, and his bond with Nina survives. There you go. He's my baby. I love him. I love him to bits. We want what I suppose what everyone wants. We just want a normal life. I don't want to be meeting any other people, anyone else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Can I talk to someone about getting married? Yeah, just go to the office. Right. Go straight down first. Yeah. What is this, a bootleg? Like, come on. These are the documents you need to bring. So you need to make an appointment for it. I need to come in together for the appointment. We're getting married. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait, man. 
It's the longest I've ever been out of prison. Thanks to Nina, you know. If it weren't for Nina, I don't know what I'd be doing now. She's your rock, my boy. That's what's up. She's your peace. After four weeks of trying, Mick Norman finally got a place to stay. Then things moved on quicker than he could ever have imagined. The place I got, which is a studio flat. I ain't, ain't back in the palace, but it's, I'm grateful. You know, it's big enough for me. In, in that time, I've moved in there. Within two weeks, my boys landed on me. My mum's run, can I take my son back? Over the moon, who would have said that three months ago? Bang, or two months ago, that you're going to have your son live with you. Oh, OK. Mick's new role is to get a teenager out of bed in time for college. I bet he's still asleep. I'm not even gonna lie, that's a nice little studio. This is your place anyway. Yeah, that's a nice big room. Yeah, that's what I'm Pretty nice. Nice little kitchen there. Nice. Decent bathroom there. Bathroom, decent. Decent shower. Slide Plenty of stand torches up there and there and plenty of towels. What else do you need? When you used to get this in eight by twelve cell for years, I mean this is like this is like luxury, isn't it? I spoiled that. <laughs> hey, it's all right. It's good stuff. He's, he's on his own journey, you know. What you lost? Nothing. You got the blue ones in there. I'm not looking for the blue ones. Then, then I've got to sort out the lasers on them. What? They got that tight the other day. Yeah. Mm. I literally. Had to cut the laces in order for me to get off. Oh, it's because well, when we grew up, we used to have to undo our laces and then do them up when we put them on. No, no, just tie them up once and then slip them on. First of all, my dad's been walking around in these, yeah? <laughs> yeah, a 70 pound pair of exclusive Adidas trainers. Who's are they? When? Who cooks? Uh, who cooks? Who does the shopping? Who does the washing? I... Yeah, talk about it. No comment. No comment. <laughs> Can't have a shower. My life was like revolved around crime, around addiction, around alcoholism. Everything you want. Can't have a shower. Fix your hat, bro. Where you from? Fix your hat. Okay, it's not these days, man. My life was revolved around crime, around addiction, around alcoholism. Everything in my life that I thought was gone, lost, never coming back. All the, you know, for the last couple of years when I've been going back to prison because I've been homeless, everything I've lost, I've suddenly got back. I'm not allowed to fail. I don't want to fail. No, you're not allowed to fail. You've been granted the second chance of a lifetime. Graham Shields had been recalled to prison after the death of his father. Is he back? Did y'all call him? But he evaded arrest by the police for a month. Now he's back at Pentonville. I was engaging this time. I know I'm not up. But I was You were engaging to... brilliantly. It's just a shame that you couldn't maintain that. As mad as it sounds, I was more... I felt happy when I come back to jail. Oh, the TV I knew that was it. Yeah, that was it. I thought, you know what? I knew I didn't have to look over my back no more because... I'm walking down all the way road thinking, is this the time? Yeah, yeah. When I did use, I thought I wasn't enjoying it. Yeah, like, kind yeah. Of thing. I'm not saying it's different if I was going out and I'm enjoying the smoking or, or I was having a good time on it or what. I won't. Yeah. We live and learn, don't we, Graham? Yeah, of course. Yeah, how many yeah. times are you going to live and learn? Graham's brief yeah. period of success on the outside has given him some consolation. Yeah. Yeah. He died five days after I got out, so. I didn't get a lot of time with him, but um, oh, you okay? I'm just glad that he seen me going to work and doing positive things, rather than um, I come out, spend my my money on cracking heroin, 
And then I might. Why is it so movie in the background? It's wavy. They come around to borrow money, for instance. The good news is, is in my experience of probation, the fact that he went that far means that next time he'll go that far. And hopefully we'll just keep getting a little bit further each time. Well, coming in and out of prison and things like that. I don't know if I'm going to again and again and again and again. Oh, that's it. Boys! After prison, Graham went to rehab. He was stayed out of trouble and free on drugs last seven months. All right, TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. I'm gone. For over a hundred years.